Hello folks, last time I showed how to calculate the density of a regular solid and in this video we'll do the same for irregular solids like this stone. The equation we use is the same as before. Density in grams per cubic centimetre is equal to mass in grams divided by volume in cubic centimetres. Measuring the mass of the stone is just as simple as it was before. Just pop it in the electronic balance and then you're done. The question is though, how do we find the volume of the stone? We're going to have to use a different method than before because we can't just multiply its length times its breadth times its height. The answer is displacement. We can take a measuring cylinder like this one here, then pour some water in it like so. When we take the stone and drop it into the measuring cylinder, the water level rises because the stone pushes some of the water out of the way. In other words, the stone displaces some of the water. The volume of the stone is just the difference between the initial volume of the water alone and the new volume of water plus the stone. This is the method which is often taught in schools because it's very straightforward and uses equipment that's readily available in the science lab. Well, apart from the stone of course. What happens though if the stone is too large for the measuring cylinder? Well, we could just use a larger measuring cylinder but that wouldn't allow us to measure the volume of the stone quite as accurately because the larger the measuring cylinder, the less precise its scale. The measuring cylinder on the left here has scale divisions that increase by one milliliter each time, but as the larger measuring cylinder on the right has a scale that increases by five milliliters each division. That's why I'm going to use a different method known as the Eureka can, also known as the displacement can or density can. All we have to do is fill up the can with water until it starts dripping from its spout. We then lower the stone into the can slowly. Hopefully you can see that I've tied the stone using fishing line so that I don't have to drop it straight in which would cause water to splash out and make the measured volume inaccurate. If I was to hold the stone while pushing it under the water then I'd end up measuring the volume of the stone plus my fingers. Now, I'm not looking for a round of applause but you've got no idea how tricky it was tying the fishing line round that stone. It really was. Oh, right, I'll stop. Thank you very much. Anyway, as the stone's lowered into the Eureka can, then water's displaced, pours out of the spout, and is then collected in a measuring cylinder. The volume of water displaced and then collected in the measuring cylinder is 50.5 millilitres. So the volume of the stone is 50.5 cubic centimetres. If you didn't know it already, one millilitre is equal to one cubic centimetre. You heard it here first, or maybe you didn't. So now it's back to our equation and we can enter our measurements of mass and volume like so. That means the density of the stone is 142.28 divided by 50.5, which is 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter. In the next video, I'll show you how to calculate the density of the water itself or any other liquid for that matter. You might at this point want to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that you're made aware of when new videos are brought out. For now though, that's us. See you soon, and thanks for watching.